Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Soham and today we're reacting to Race War by Tom McDonald and Adam Calhoun. And by, by the title alone, this song seems like it's going to be pretty divisive to a lot of listeners, uh, or at the very least socially and culturally significant. I mean, anytime that you ta you're talking about a race, there's a lot of moving parts and people have uh, <laughs> are very quick to blow up uh, in their reactions to things. So I'm just excited to get into the reaction. I hope you are as well. If you do enjoy it, please hit that subscribe button. It helps me out a lot. And yeah, without further ado, let's get into it. It's okay to be racist. As long as you hate on the Caucasians. Teaching white kids that their shades the same as school shooters and rapists. Maybe I'm tripping because the white children have been getting taught that they got white privilege by the white guys in the high heels who identify as the white women. I'm not proud to be white, but I'm fine with it because oh I'm not allowed gosh. to have pride in it. There's so much going on. Is this Tom here who's rapping? He's rapping really fast. Uh, yeah, he said a lot. <laughs> the first line was about, it's okay to be racist if it's against white people. I don't get that mentality whatsoever. If You should just hate people based on their own individual flawed characteristics. If somebody is a bad person, hate them for being a bad person, not based on the color of their skin. Come on, what kind of hypocrisy is that? It just doesn't make sense. If I do something wrong, does that mean every other Indian person's done something wrong? Hell no. If a white person's done something wrong, does that mean every other white person has to adopt their wrongdoing? Hell no. Even if it's your ancestors, you are the person that you are. God, I could go on and on about this, but I don't want to talk your ear off. Let's listen to them. Because the colonizers and the white biggest made white history my business. I ain't never mm. gonna give a damn See? if you like me. I'm gonna trip when they stereotype me. I'm a white boy and a white boy like me knows that all lives matter. Bite me. When I was younger, they taught me to never see color to treat every man as if he was my brother. True. Literally, whenever you're younger, you don't even think about race. Like, I have friends of all different races, all different backgrounds as a kid, and race never comes up. <laughs> There's studies about this, how kids at young, young, young ages, even two years old, <laughs> they don't care about race. It's only put onto us by the elders above our ancestors, right, who have these long-standing grievances. And that's not to disavow and just completely forget all of the wrongdoing that's happened. That's not the case. But the people in our current generation are not responsible for the actions of the past. It's such a weird misattribution. But now that we're grown up, we hate one another for all of the ways that we struggle and suffer. They come in for better, we run it for cover. The government wants us divided and dumber, addicted and drunk in the gutter. So we never wake up and never recover. <laughs> Yeah, there's so much going on here. And like he brings up this idea that the government are the people that are just keeping us dumber. And, you know, you can go into many conspiracy theory lands here, but I kind of ascribe to the idea that there are a lot of these like small minor quabbles, like race doesn't actually have to be a problem, but maybe it's forced on us to be a problem so that we're distracted from the actual uh, true evil doing that's going on. And that's like a, that's like a, a wilder conspiracy, which I have less factual information to corroborate with but why are we fighting about race if we all love each other which we should and we do what's going on here i don't get it call me culture vulture because i rap good i don't pop stands and smoke backwoods but they call me a wigger and label me hitler and hate like i'm wearing a clan hood it ain't left or right or black or white it's good and evil elite folks hate normal people united we stand and divide we fall america we gotta get Ooh. real you were segregated that was united we stand divided we fall that is such a that is such a bar and that's com complete facts. We can only be better when we're together, honestly. We're the sum of we're greater than the sum of our parts. But if we stand divided, if we're constantly polarized and looking for the next argument with somebody based on their gender, sexuality, race, I mean, it doesn't matter, guys. Let's let's just be friendly to each other. Is that cool? Is that possible? Oh yeah, yeah. It was not fair. You were enslaved. They did not care, but you were never on a plane. And my generation was not there That's trauma in your DNA Causing what we see today I pray to God you staying strong Don't want to see no man in pain Your white folks I'm embarrassed Some of y'all are such parents That prejudice you inherited Was racism from your parents Get that poison mm -hmm. out your veins Yep the prejudice that we in, we implicitly may carry comes from older generations. And of course, we have to be mindful and I think even Tom there is saying that we have to be understanding that these things are from the past. They are in our DNA, but we as actors cognizant of what happened in the past can move forward with this idea that unity matters more than these prejudices so i don't know i feel like this song and maybe arts in this kind of the arts in this kind of space can easily get misinterpreted <laughs> which then like incentivizes actual racist people to be like oh look this is uh completely uh on board with what we're talking about i think this is a very nuanced take and 
it's hard with music to do this and especially with rap i feel like it's happening so fast that i'm having time to having trouble having the time to process all of what's going on here but i'm glad music like this is coming out i know joiner lucas has kind of songs like this uh they just start kind of cultural conversations which is important being able to talk to each other is the first step to being able to solve these larger uh societal issues about race and anything else these whites and blacks are all the same they want us in our graves just let me try to explain mm. i swear they want us in a race for dying every day for <laughs> whose lives matter more yeah I like that he's saying that they want us in a race war so somebody who the they is probably some hegemonic structure above us that wants us to just quabble and bicker with one another i don't want to die in that war i don't want to fight for this random innocuous not even necessary cause there's no reason to fight between races we should all coexist peacefully I like the chorus in that sense. I, think, I feel like the chorus itself, like musically, is a little corny for my tastes, but that's not a knock on the song. I think we can take different things that are positive uh, from here, which he's got a great message, doesn't he? If you born black, you lose. Might as well go get that. You gonna die before you 25 get shot over your sh What did he say there? Is this Adam, by the way? He said something. I didn't. I guess they blurted out. If you born black, you lose. Might as well go get that. You gon' die before you. If you born black, you lose. You might as well get that. And then it blanks out. I don't actually know what he's talking about there. Twenty-five get shot over your shoes. You gon' get killed by police even when you follow the rules. If you listen to the news, you gon' believe all this is true. True. I feel no white guilt. They don't lie for me when I'm. There's this whole thing with like not believing the news and. I have always had this belief that you have to imagine both timelines where the news is telling you the truth, where the news is telling you a lie, and where the news is like kind of telling you something in the middle. And based on those three potentials, the one that's told to you with the one that's correct and the one that's not told, let's say, you kind of have to construct your worldview based on those timelines. So I never just take at face value what's given to me. I say, okay, if what is given to me is true on its surface, then I should proceed in the best logical way. And if the thing that was told to me was a lie, then what is the opposite of that lie? And if that was true, what do I think? And what should I do going forward? That is a hard mental practice and it involves honestly a lot of overthinking, but like I'm a very analytical person. So my mind kind of tends to do that anyways. A lot of people don't really do that, which is why the first thing that you hear on the news is taken as gospel. And that can be problematic because there's implicit biases on any end of the political spectrum, social spectrum, whatever you want to call it. There's always some reason to doubt somebody's tr uh, st statement. And if you take it at face value initially, uh, you're doing yourself a disservice. And there's always a type one error that you can cause by instantly believing something. And there's always a type two error that's caused when you instantly disbelieve something. Generally speaking, the truth lies somewhere in the middle. That's why when we have such polarization, the conversation is infinitely harder because now where's that middle ground that we used to you know, all stand on together? See, seemingly just seems to fall away. Just ridiculous. Killed, I guess white lies don't matter, sad, but that's the way that I feel. I feel like they feel like, like I don't know what they all call me. Cis, white, male, bigot, racist, he's a Nazi, that's not me. I'm yeah. not one of and it's, it's so fucking stupid, and apologies for swearing, but it's so fucking stupid the fact that you're just labeled. And, the, um, and once you've been labeled something, you have to, you're ascribed to all of the characteristics that that label kind of lends itself to so if somebody says hey you're uh you're white therefore you're racist that is a quick labeling that's kind of let's say over uh what would you call it uh i don't know you're over labeling you're doing too much essentially and it's really problematic because when you say everybody's racist then the people who are literally actually racist kind of get off scot-free because now you've enlarged the pool of racists doesn't make any sense does it because if somebody does something very small and maybe accidental you're putting them in the same bucket as a actual neo-nazi like that cannot be correct you cannot treat those things as the same category we need more 
vocabulary, honestly, to describe the things that lie in the middle that may be problematic behaviors, but aren't as bad as the behaviors that are obviously bad. And I think losing so much of that nuance because of the lack of conversation leads to this quick labeling and mislabeling, if we're being honest. These white liberal commies who think black America needs allies in they army. Your neighborhoods all gay and claim you pro black, but you faking guys are dying on the pavement. All your hashtags won't save them, that ain't gangsters. People begging for their life still. I know white people who can't afford to pay their life bill who might feel like they the ones who lose in their life. When the worst thing you could be is not ashamed to be white. White privilege is <sighs> the worst thing you can be is not ashamed to be white. So basically, if you're proud to be white, that's terrible. And it's terrible for a number of reasons. And I don't know, it, I, I'm back and forth on this. Like ideologically, what do I believe? Do I think that like being proud of my race is itself racist or is that something just to be prideful of? You know, I'm uh, originally of Indian descent culturally. Uh, my parents are from India. And if I'm proud of that, is that a good thing or is that a bad thing? I don't know. <laughs> I don't actually know. I have to think more about that out loud. Um, I don't I, I like being Indian. I would I would find it weird if somebody said, oh, you're Indian, therefore, blah, blah, blah. I don't think that's a positive thing to say about any race. Therefore, I don't know. Why do we have to put continually putting race into the, into the equation, right? Yeah, there's more half-baked thoughts that I have, but I don't want to <laughs> ruin the reaction. I probably already have. So if you're still listening to me at this point, you know, <laughs> maybe you've, you've enjoyed something, some of the things that I've had to say. Hit that subscribe button too, by the way. All right. Can't afford to pay their light bill Who might feel like they the ones who lose in their life When the worst thing you could be is not ashamed to be white White privilege is a system they position for division If you black you go to prison If you white your life is different Take some money, race, religion Sprinkle in some ammunition And make everyone believe that the other team is the villain I ain't pro-black <clears throat> That's the constant problem is everybody else is made out to be the perpetrator When a lot of the times there are things that we have to heal internally so that we don't have to constantly blame others for the problems that we face in our day to day. It's another like societal issue is everybody's very quick to blame others and not look introspectively, not look for the areas that you can improve on. And that's not to say that other people can't be victimizing you, right? Other people certainly victimize you, but you also victimize yourself. There's two things happening at once and disregarding one thing entirely for in favor of the other is again, it's either a type one or type two error. Either way, you're making a mistake. Either way, you're causing more division. Not good. Very not good. I ain't pro white, I'm pro American. Every color curves of bones one day when you bury them. Mm. Whites and blacks are all the same. They want us in that grave. Just let me try to explain. I swear yeah. they want us in a race for dying every day for. There's so many. <laughs> Honestly, there's a lot of different pieces of art and songs that I've heard that use kind of similar uh, language in the sense that there's always this idea of like, okay, when we all die, we're all the same, or when we're back in the earth, we're the same, or when we all bleed, we all bleed the same color. And there's you just listen to the, the poetry and what they're saying as well, because so much of that is rooted in these conceptual ideas of why does race matter? It doesn't matter. We all are the same underneath. We all have the same DNA. We all have, I mean, there's outward differences, sure, and there's maybe internal differences within our own uh, mental constructions of the world, the knowledge that we have, the preferences that we have. Of course, we're different, but we're mostly the same. Can we agree to that? Please, let's agree to that. Hmm. They always say us against them. And I understand what you're getting at when you say us against them, but I wish people were clearer on what they mean by them. And I ask that as an earnest question, because honestly, a lot of the time when someone asks, like, who are you referring to when you ask about them? People are like, you should know who them is, blah, blah, blah. But it's like, no, I'm like, genuinely, who is them? And, you know, I have this question, if you can answer for me, like, who is them specifically? And I have ideas, 
and maybe half of them are right, half of them are wrong, but I just don't know. And I always find that people who make this claim that like, yeah, it's us against them, they're causing division with us in between. I think that's logically true. And I feel, I see that timeline. I just, I have a, <laughs> I have a trouble putting the face to the name, if that makes sense. So I'm looking for some clarity there. Everybody gonna win, everybody gonna see that the color of your skin don't change the color that you bleed. There you go. <laughs> the line. I deserve a pat on the back for <laughs> for prophesizing the line that we all bleed the same color. <laughs> Chorus is kind of growing on me. <laughs> there it is. Race War by Tom McDonald and Adam Calhoun. Very, honestly, I don't know what I was expecting for this song. I don't know these two guys. Uh, I like it. I like the song. I like the message. Um, what are my thoughts in general? I think we shouldn't I mean we should I don't know we should care about race in the sense that we shouldn't allow people to be victimized based on race but we shouldn't make the other overcorrection to be racist to the people who were I mean I don't know I don't I don't even know what I'm trying to say like just don't be racist period every race can be made uh can be racist uh there's always this argument about okay yeah you have uh these power structures that cannot allow the previously uh, the previous oppressors to be victimized i don't i understand it to some extent but there's so much gray area there's so much context that needs to be added to a statement that like that that you cannot just make a statement that unilateral and say it evenly applies everywhere and call it fair and call it actually correct so i don't know i i can understand where people are coming from with okay we were completely victimized in the past and yes you were and your ancestors and your generations uh have suffered consequences and we should find ways to rectify those things but we have to blame the right people right and there's at a certain point a lot of personal responsibility that goes on into improving uh, our own situations and the people around us helping us as well uh and then trying to find a way to be less divisive in general because you know, at a certain point, we're going to, I mean, there's a whole idea of like, ideological cannibalization, we become too polarized. And at a certain point, everybody is an atomized philosopher, and nobody has consensus at any point, which causes these complete divisions. And, you know, I do my best to be careful in the way I speak, just so that I don't actually make uh, verbal mistakes, things that misrepresent what I actually truly believe maybe I have over the course of this video and this reaction. So forgive me, or, you know, at least in the comments, uh, let me know where you think our uh, differences lay and we can maybe discuss those. But again, we need the space for that conversation to exist and continued depolarization, continued finger pointing, mislabeling, misattribution. These are all conversational, let's say time bombs, which make conversation impossible. And I don't know, once conversation breaks down, I mean, you can see it within relationships, right? Once you can't talk to one another, it's done, realistically, unless you can find a way to mend the bridge. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the reaction. Take care, everyone. Have a great rest of your day and peace.